Hello and welcome to the Fairy Little Knitting Podcast. I'm Marsha, also known as Fairy Little on Instagram and Ravelry, and this is my podcast all about knitting. I'm going to talk to you today about works in progress. I have a finished object and also knit along news and some jibber jabber as well at the very end. So let's get into it. I have been, I've been working on getting some unfinished objects done, which are up here. And I asked in one of the previous episodes if anybody would be interested in an unfinished object knit along. The overwhelming answer I got was yes. There's so many of you who are interested in an unfinished objects knit along. So it's going to be called hashtag project UFO. And what we're going to do is we are going to take from now till the end of the year and finish all our works in progress. Try to get them all off the needles. I have already started, um, but there will be a thread and you can go down below. It'll be linked below. That'll take you to the Ravelry group where that knit along will be happening. So every unfinished object that you, uh, you pick up and you finish during that time counts as an entry. If you are taking part in the Skaha sweater knit along, then that also counts. So, and that needs to be finished by November 31st. But everything else in the knit along continues on till January 1st. So we've got a little bit of time. It's not a ton of time, but it's a little bit of time to just pick up those things that just need the toes added or the crowns of a hat put together or, um, you know, a leg or a sleeve or whatever it is that you haven't finished on that project. Get it done, get it off the needles, and you can enter to win. All you have to do is put in a picture and write the description. And I'll draw out of that uh, when we hit the new year, I'll draw out of that and I'll probably draw a few different prizes um, because I kind of want to, in next year I kind of want it to be my stash down year. So I will go through my stash and find some beautiful things to give away to you lovely viewers. I have a bit of a collection going on over there on the top shelf in the corner, right there. And that is a bunch of stuff that was sent to me for giveaways because I moved my knitting room. I have a lot of stuff got like put in different places. So I'm collecting it all as I clean up the knitting room and set it up. It's still not as set up as I want it to be, but it's coming. Okay, back to the knitting. So because I'm doing the, the project UFO, and I'm getting things off of the needles as much as possible. I pulled out things that I had started that are not really, haven't really been done. So this is a coaster that I started. It's just, it's actually, it's a, a square that I'm knitting, but it's double thickness, but it's a square and it is to go on your coffee table to protect it from uh, hot cups and beverages and stuff. So one of the girls picked this yarn as the yarn that she wanted uh, for her coaster. So I'm working on that. The yarn I'm using here is just a scrap. I have, I had a whole bunch of scraps, so I thought that I would just go through my scraps and make a bunch of little coasters. Everybody gets their own little coaster and that's their responsibility. So make sure they use it on the wood furniture. So this is coming along really well. It is uh, I'll just give you the little bit. Of, it's just a recipe. I'm not following a pattern. So, I'm using the same needles that I use for socks. So these are two millimeters and these are high, high sharps and I'm magic looping it because I enjoy a good magic loop. And I originally cast on, originally cast on 31 stitches on one needle and I picked up like I do when I do toe up socks. So then I doubled that. So I have 62 stitches on here. And I just picked up, so I cast these on and then I picked them up on the other needle. So one needle is one side and then the other is the other side of, of this. So that is one of the things that I have on the needles and I'm working on and it's going to be if I just did it, it would be finished by now, but it's it's not. It's one of those UFOs that needs to be picked up and just finished. So I have that in my to finish pile. It won't take long. I could probably finish it today and then it'll be a finished object in the next episode. A little one, but one. 
And it's a really easy knit. I'm just going to go for till it's square. So I'll know it's square when I can take the bottom edge and fold it up like this. And what will happen when it's square is there won't be any extra fabric here. It will actually all line up. So this line that you see here, I'll move that out of the way. So when you fold it up, this line here actually will line up with this line here from the corner. So it will go like that and it will go up. So when I fold this up, this actually tells me how many rows I have left, left to do to make it square because I need, I'll just take gauge and then how many stitches or how many rows per inch and then that's how many more rows I need to do up here to make it square. So I need that much more and as it gets larger, this will get smaller and then it will line up perfectly. Once it's square, I'm going to Kitchener stitch it closed and it will be done and ready to go. So I think that's gonna go in the little Christmas gifts pile and I'm going to knit a few more of those and give them give them out as gifts. One other thing I'm thinking of doing is adding little tassels to the ends, just little small tassels, so it'll kind of look like a mug rug. And that's that's simple enough to do with a crochet hook and then you just you just take strips and and you just crochet them through and create a knot. And it will be really cute and it will be personalized and then after if I feel like um, double stitching uh, her initial on there I can do that as well so there's it, it's endless I could even do color work doing this and have a really cool pattern but this is the first time I, I did it so this is the first one I pulled out and and it's just super easy to do you don't you don't need a pattern for it maybe I'll write up the recipe and but that wouldn't that wouldn't be anything that would cost anything on on Ravelry it would just be a, a recipe that you could just grab and and have and hold <laughs> okay so that's that for that and I'll work on that later the next work in progress I have is something I started quite a while ago there was this lovely yarn was sent to me by a viewer and she actually sent me um, a skein for myself and a skein for a giveaway. So that skein is up there doo, 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 for the giveaway. And I'm going to give that skein away with the release of this pattern. So it's Lavender Mountain Yarns and it's a 80 uh, super 80 percent superwash merino, 20 percent nylon. It's in the Banks Channel colorway and it has 462 yards. It's a fingering weight and it's 100 gram skein. So this yarn is super pretty. It has lots of color. So it's very variegated, which I really like. I have an extra pair of needles in there for some reason. It's a very variegated skein. It's got white and blue and green and it's really, really pretty. So I've actually started designing this shawl a while ago and it's one of those UFOs that needs to just be finished. This is a pattern that I am creating that, again, this one, when I release this, this is going to be free on Ravelry, this one, because it's just a simple one. And I'm actually going to do a video tutorial uh, series with it. So you can follow along and you can go below that video when I create that and and knit, knit it along with me. So this is it's going to be a free one. It's very intuitive, it's very simple. If you have never knit a shawl before, this one will be easy and um well fairly simple. The beginning is a is a tab. It's a tab cast on. So that's the part that I feel like if you've never done a shawl the video tutorial will be really good for that because I can show you how to do that because a lot of designs, a lot of shawl patterns call for that tab cast on and sometimes it's a little bit, um, a little bit difficult if you haven't knit a shawl before to understand what it means by turning it 90 degrees and, and where to pick up your stitches so that it looks even and so it just lies nicely. So I will be doing a video on that and I'm about this this far. It's going to be a one skein shawl 
And it is, I'm, I'm about a quarter of the way through the ball. As with other, as with any shawl that starts off small and gets larger, every row I, I knit, it uses more yarn. So this is going to start going down really, really quickly. And I need to make sure that I have enough of this left for the edging for binding off. And again, it will have a simple bind off. So uh, new, newer shawl knitters can, can do it. It doesn't have a ton of detail. It's very simple is very, very simple. And, and there's, I change pace a little bit at one point to mix it up a bit and then super simple. So it's, this yarn is really, really nice to knit with. I'm really enjoying it. It is, it's beautiful. My stitch markers that I have on here are the Haya Haya yarn ball stitch markers. So that's what I'm using this time for my stitch markers on this one. So there's that one, that one, and then I've got a little green one over here. So flip that around so you can see it. So, and it's really coming along nicely. And these are my high, high interchangeable needles. And uh, they are six US four millimeter needles and they are the interchangeables. I really enjoy the high high interchangeables. They are a very smooth transition. These ones, uh, the fixed circulars have a more um, gentle, of course I have a pair right here. So the fixed have a very gentle slope to the cable. And because you are attaching the cable portion to the needles, it has a more drastic change right there. Like you can, you could see that it goes up a little bit more there. So it's not, not as smooth, but when you're knitting with it, you don't notice it. So it, um, I tend to have to like push my stitches up a little bit more with this versus with the the fixed circulars I don't have to do that as much but with these I do have to I do have to push the yarn a bit but it's not anything that bothers me at all so these are really nice this should be done in the next little while and then I will type up the pattern and then I will cast it on again and do the video the the taping to go with it and then when that comes up, that's when it will be released. So I am thinking that that will probably be coming up in January, just to give myself enough time to get it all together and to get everything else off the needles, etc. So I'm just planning for I'm just planning for planning ahead, and that's what I'm hoping to have done. Um, I mentioned in one of the previous uh, podcasts that I would do a knit along like real time and this is what that was for. So I'm hoping that you guys are looking forward to that as much as I am because I think it, it's going to be, it's going to be fun. And yeah, so, and that is, and it's being housed in this really cool bag that I got from a bag designer when I first started the podcast because I have a, a vacation trailer that I've named Edith. <laughs> And it was inspired by that, but I cannot find the tag on it. So I do apologize. If I can find out who it was from, then I will post it below. And if it was from you, if, uh, if I can't, then if you could just post below uh, a link to your Etsy shop, that would be fantastic. I really, I really feel bad that I can't remember, but I'd rather show this than, than not. And yeah, so that is that still working on that. I have another work in progress. This one doesn't actually qualify as a unfinished object. It's more of a work in progress because I haven't stopped. I just work on it and then pause, but it's never been put on the shelf. <laughs> it's never been allocated to the shelf. So it's still consistently being worked on. This is my zigzag shawl. And I'm doing another version of it. This one is actually being done in lace weight. And it is, I'm knitting it in wool mice. So the cakes for the wool mice are huge. It comes in 300 gram skeins. So this took a while to cake up. And it is, it's going really, really far. It's going very well, this yarn. It's the first time I've knit with this, the lace weight wool mice. 
And it's really enjoyable. The colors are really fantastic. And it's showing off the zigzag part of the pattern really nicely. Mail in. So it's showing off the zigzag part of the pattern really, really nicely. And it's going to be fantastic. And again, as usual, <laughs> I mostly use Haya Haya's. They, I am allergic to nickel. So Haya Haya needles are stainless steel. So I don't get a reaction with my hands. My hands will crack and peel and it's gross. So I just use stainless steel needles and then I don't have that problem. These are Haya Haya Sharp 6 US 4 millimeter needles. I actually needed more 4 millimeter needles because I have so many things on the needles and I do need to get those things off the needles, but I did end up ordering some more high highs. I ordered size 3.75 millimeter, 4 millimeter, 4.5, and 5 millimeter. And I ordered them from Paradise Fibers. They are an online shop, and that's where I usually order my high highs from because they are a really good price. They ship fairly, like very quickly. They're, they are American. So um, sometimes when I order things from there, I have to, there's certain costs associated with that. But I've always been happy with, with their service. And you actually, the more you spend, the more points you get. So I've actually gotten quite a few free things from them because of uh, points building up, which is really cool. And I really like that. So I did end up ordering a couple more pairs because I have a couple other things that I'm working on that need that needed those sizes. So this is being housed in my fat squirrel bag, which I got at Rhinebeck last year. And this little blue bike looks very similar to my bike that I have. I have a basket on the front. It's got those that that. Um, mud catcher on the back and it's it's very vintage looking uh, my handlebars are a little bit different than than these mm, not much but a little bit and uh, so I just really needed to have it and it's this almost the same color as my bike is too so I fell in love with that and it's very autumnal which I really like too her bags are really well made and they also have this cool it's her zipper pull but it's also could be a key fob to hold on to things. So that is the next thing. I am still working on my Skaha sweater. <laughs> and yet again, it hasn't gotten very much farther. And I probably will not be touching it till I get back from my trip. So that's going to be in mid-November. But I will show you again where it's at. So it's just the body still. Um, I really enjoy it. It's it's an easy knit and that's how come I feel comfortable putting it aside to finish all of the other things because I know when I sit down to when do I this. sit down to do this, it's going to go quickly. Uh, the one thing I will mention is that I'm using a bulky yarn or I'm using a chunky yarn. So when I did my gauge swatch, because it's chunky, and when I use the actual needles it calls for, um, my gauge was too large. So I ended up having to go down a needle size to get gauge for the size I wanted to make. So, and it's Madeline Tosh in the smokestack colorway, and I have two different dye lots of, of this. So I'm alternating every few rows, and uh, yeah, it's looking good. Yeah, I like it. So I have my two different balls that I'm going from. So I just go back and forth. It's coming along really nicely. And that is going to be, that will be finished by the end of November with the knit along. So I'm really happy about that. Everybody who's taken part in the knit along, it's going swimmingly. There is a whole knitting group in Prince George who the whole knit group is doing the knit along. So that is really exciting. I love seeing everybody's finished objects. There's quite a few that like people started and they're already done. I allotted a lot of time because uh, some people, if it's their first sweater or first couple of sweaters, it might need a little bit more time. So 
And now that it's sweat sweater weather, it's easier to work on a sweater in your lap than it was in the summer. The knit along began in August and it ends at the end of November. So plenty of time to knit it. You still have time now to knit it if you're a quicker knitter. You, 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 could, you could do it easy. So now for a finished object. It has not been blocked. It has just been finished. And I don't... I think I've woven in the ends. Yes, I have. So I, on the last episode, I was knitting the Kalolotch pants by Andrea Rangel. And this is what they look like. I started these last year before Knit City and I was hoping to have them done last year before Knit City. Uh, Carla from... The Relentless Knitting Podcast asked if I wanted to make swants, and I, at the time I didn't realize swants were like I was like sweater pants. Okay, I can do that, and this is what I thought she meant. <laughs> so I cast these on. She's like, "No, we go and pick up sweaters and turn them into swants." Stephen West, and then uh, so I looked it up and found out that the thing that I was making was a little bit different. So. <laughs> I didn't get them done in time for Knit City last year or this year, but I did finish these last week after I recorded and they are fantastic. I am so happy with them. I have to say I do need to wear something under them. They are, when I wear them, they're a little bit see-through, so I do have to wear something under them. I have leggings that are black and they are shorter than these so it's kind of the perfect length. I've already put them on. They fit really, really nicely. They're very comfortable. They are not itchy at all. I knit them out of Lorna's laces in the pewter colorway. And it's in the sport weight. So Lorna's laces in sport weight. So what I'm doing with the leftover yarn from from projects if I have an extra skein from that project I'm actually adding those to my giveaway pile so they will not be orphans in my stash forever they will actually be be sent out to somebody at some point but then you'll have a little bit of something that matches matches something I have knit <laughs> and so the construction of this is really interesting so you cast on and there's some short rows, so you cast on one side of the waistband, you knit up, and there's short row shaping, and then you knit up, and then, then you do something at the top, and then you knit in the other direction down. You put in the elastic, there's elastic for the waistband, so you put that in, and then you uh, knit your stitches from both sides together, and then you carry on knitting down. In the beginning, you start off with this cool cable down the sides. So you can see where, where you'd be able to see through that. A long shirt will fix it. <laughs> but so you have a long cable on each side. And then when you get to the legs, it actually, you have those cables going all around the legs. They make such cool tights. And the, there's no holes there or here so those have all been sewn up uh, the the one thing that I would say is that like you can see my hand through there that's not holes that's just where the purl stitches are and because I knit continental style my purl stitches are looser than my knit stitches so I tend to get that a little bit which again I'm going to block these and see if they bloom because if they bloom it might take up some of that space in the air in between and so, and what blooming means, if you're, if you've never heard that term before, is when you wash your wool, um, when you wash your yarn after you've knitted into a project, sometimes there is, uh, like processing grease or there's, or it's just, it's just tight from, from being spun. And what happens when you add warm water to it is that the fiber opens up 
and that's that's referred to as blooming so it can take the extra grease out if it's a greasy kind of um, woolly wool it will take that out and 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 it will fluff up so it will actually become a, a like a bit of a larger um, gauge than than what you knit so that's why swatching is really important because if you knit a swatch and then you wash it the yarn is going to bloom and it's not necessarily going to come out in the same gauge as you need it to so you might find out that it blooms a lot so you have to come down a couple needle sizes to get the proper gauge because if you gain a stitch for every inch and you're knitting something that's um, 30 inches around you are gaining inches with just one stitch in an inch. So it's really important to take gauge and to and to know that what's going to happen with your yarn. Um, some people don't care. Some people are just, they're good with it. They will, they'll make it work. And I've done that too. I've, I've knit something where I didn't take gauge and then I, and then I washed it and blocked it. And it bloomed and it became much too big. And this happened to me in particular when I first started knitting garments. I knit a sweater and it was this beautiful purple and purple sweater. And I used black yarn for the collar and the cuffs and the pockets. And it was gorgeous. And then I blocked it and I had no idea how to block. I had, uh, and I just knew I needed to block it so you soak it and then you lay it out and and stretch it and do what you need to do learned a lot that day about how to properly block something so and about gauge so I blocked this sweater and it ended up being probably 10 sizes too big for me so I I ended up I put it online and I sold it um, and I just washed my hands of it learned my lesson and haven't and haven't uh done that since but i did i did block it pretty hard so i i feel like now now because of what i know i feel like if i had steam blocked it it would have been fine if i had gently blocked it and not like pulled it apart like <laughs> stretched it so much when I blocked it or if I re-blocked it I, it probably would have been better but um I I didn't know what I didn't know back then so now I know um gauge is important and especially if it's something that's going to be fitted because these hopefully what I'm hoping for I did do I did do a, a swatch so that's good <laughs> I'm happy with that but what I'm hoping is that that the 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 yarn will bloom enough that it takes up those the spaces on the in-between and just fluffs it up just enough so that I don't have to worry as much about them being a see-through but they're gorgeous uh really great design really great design ah uh, that's the first time I feel like that's the first time I've ever knit one of her patterns and I really enjoyed it and so if you are looking for something that's a little bit different um if you're done, if you've knit too many sweaters or too many pairs of socks, this is a great, a great other thing to have in your wardrobe. They're nice and warm. I feel like these can be like, I, I could wear them out, but I would put something under them, but I could just snuggle around the house in them and, you know, and sit in front of the fireplace and knit wearing my knit pants. So I'm very, very happy with them. And yeah, that's my finished object. So in the beginning, I talked a little bit about the knit along that we're hosting. There's two going on, uh, the Skaha sweater cal and also the Project UFO. So both of those are going to be linked below. You can click on both of those and then go and see. And Project UFO is open till January 1st and the Skaha sweater knit along is till November 31st and then I'll draw prizes. The uh, prize for the Skaha sweater knit along is going to be four skeins of your color palette choice. So I'll send you four skeins if you're blue, then I'll send you four skeins that have blues or are blue related, uh, pinks, yellows, whatever, whatever. And you'll let me know what you're interested in. And then I, I, once the winner chooses the color palette, I will take a picture or I'll add that into the episode before I send it out. So 
super excited about that. So now I'm going to go into jibber jabber. So I let you guys know that I was going on a trip and that I wasn't going to talk about it until tickets were purchased and it was finalized. So I am going with my husband to China. I am so excited about this. We leave next next Monday. So I have actually done some pre-recording. So you're going to be seeing this while I'm actually gone. So I thought ahead because I didn't want to leave you guys without an episode. The um, episode after I come back might be a little bit late. Hopefully I'll be able to do like a vlog style while I'm away so that that will be the episode when I come back. That's what you'll get. You, you'll get to see. Um, so my husband is uh, working, he works in the tree fruit industry and he is the, for the company he works for, he's the international representative for that company and he goes all around the world uh, discussing tree fruit trade and that sort of thing. And there is a university in Shanghai that has asked him to come and be a guest speaker or a guest lecturer for a week. So I said, hey, if you're going for this guest lecture thing, I could go with you. <laughs> and he said, could you? What about the children? And I said, well, my sister could probably come and look after them for a couple weeks. And so she said, yes, she's coming up. She's going to look after the kids. And he and I are going to go to China for two weeks. So we start off in Shanghai for a week. And then he's taking me somewhere. I don't know. I told him to surprise me. And so I don't know. I don't know anything about it. I know that our tickets are booked. I know that we have our visas and I know that we have four stops on the way to China in flights. And then after Shanghai, I don't know where we're going. I don't know how we're getting there. I I just said, you know what, you, you plan it and I will come along and go where you want to go and see what you want to see. And there's certain things that I'm interested in seeing while, while we're there. Uh, and I'm hoping that we'll get to see them, but I don't feel like this will be my last trip there. So even if we don't get to see all the things that I'm interested in seeing, then that's it's still fine with me. It's still an adventure and it's a big adventure because I don't know anywhere where we're going. So I'm really excited about that. So we'll be coming back in the middle of November and I am going to go on the hunt for some Japanese yarns and hopefully I'll have some video footage of that. Maybe I'll meet some Chinese knitters and I'm really excited. I started working with uh, Duolingo and trying to learn some Chinese before we go. Um, it's not really sticking in my brain at the moment. I'm usually really, really good with languages. Uh, I'm finding this one a little bit more difficult because I'm learning the symbols for each word at the same time as I'm learning the word. And, and I'm spending a lot of, I am spending a lot of time with Duolingo, but it's just, it's not, it's not sticking yet. So hopefully, hopefully polite things will stick. That's the things that I really, that's, that's the stuff that I really want to learn and, and know is, is hello, goodbye, please, thank you. You know, those, those things, because I'm Canadian and we like manners. And so <laughs> those are the first things I really want to, to have is to be able to say thank you. And um, <laughs> as Canadians, we do say sorry a lot too. <laughs> so maybe I'll find out what that is too. But I'm really looking forward to it. I'm very excited. This is going to be an amazing, amazing trip. I'm, I'm pumped. And yeah, so you may have noticed also, I have a whole bunch of extra knitting up there that has appeared because while I've been straightening out my yarn room, which is still a disaster from when I moved in here, I've been finding the things that I've been working on that started off at, that are designs or they're partly done or whatever. And I've just been putting them over there so that I have them together because it's just, I just need them all in one place so that I can see them, work on them, finish them, and then I'll be done. Um, I'm a very, I'm a very B type personality. Um, so I'm very much 
will start something and not necessarily finish it. <laughs> so I have to really schedule my time and and really make myself um, regimented or else things just slip by and I'm like, oh, wait, it's Thursday and I haven't done anything. So, yeah. If you are somebody who has ever traveled or are interested in travel, um, put down, write down below, let me know where you've been and what your favorite uh, place is or where you would like to go. Uh, I love traveling. I've been all, I've been to a lot of places and it's something that's a real priority for my husband and myself. Um, whether we travel with each other or by ourselves or with the whole family, we like to do all three of those things. Uh, my husband and I holiday a little bit differently. I like I like hotels and showers and he likes hostels and um, <laughs> hostels and street food. So I know that that's one thing I will get to look forward to is the hostels and street food that we're going to be staying at and having on this trip. Um, but if you enjoy travel or you would like to travel at any point or if you have in, at any point traveled, uh, let me know down below what your favorite, favorite place is because that is so interesting to me and maybe your favorite place will become my new favorite place because I'll add it to the list of places that I want to go. So um, I think that's it for me for today. It was a bit of a longer episode than I've done in the last little while. And I have really enjoyed spending time with you. So thank you for joining me. If you liked this episode, please subscribe and give it a thumbs up and go ahead and share it with your friends. Uh, don't forget to answer below where your favorite destination is, was, will be. And I will um, take as much video as I can in China and I will share that with every one of you. Thank you so much. Until next time.